What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, everybody? This is Josh Wilson, and we are back in the studio with the Big Dog Podcast. Got my main man, Jonathan Mack. What up? What running up? Running all the tech. How are you, Jonathan? I'm hanging out. Yeah? Doing much better than last week. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, last week, you were just existing, you said. Yeah. So now I'm glad we're better than existing. Yeah. We're progressing. And we're back to the usual. Hanging out <laughs> is my, my general medium. <laughs> hanging out. That's awesome. Well, look, we've got a special treat for everybody listening today. A longtime friend of mine now and friend of Off Leash Canine Training Hampton Roads and fellow scout guide family. Absolutely. Um, as well, I got Rudy Heinitz with Consociate Media in the studio this morning. How's it going, Rudy? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Man, I'm doing so great. And I'm excited. We've talked about this for a while about right. getting you in and I'm um, excited that it could finally come up, Absolutely. you know, and a lot of times I find, and maybe you do too, you know, having your own businesses and stuff. When I try to plan something out far in advance, it almost becomes more difficult for it to actually happen. And sometimes it's like, you got to do like just a quick Hail Mary, like I did with that text and be right. like, Hey, you free next week. Absolutely. Yeah. You go too far out and yeah. there's too many opportunities for something else to get. In the right. Way. And you know, you said I got options each day, except for Monday. I'm like Thursday morning. Right. And here we are. It was yeah, so it's easy. way easier that way. <laughs> it was so easy. And um, so anyway, as I mentioned, you know, Rudy uh, and I know each other. We initially met with our um, relationship through the scout guide, Yep. which if you guys don't know of the scout guide or are familiar with the scout guide, wherever you are in the U S um, just look it up and you probably have seen it. Honestly, if you're any mid or major city, right. You know, I think at this point there is a scout guide issue. Yeah. You know, it's there, everywhere. There is a, 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 a book and what the scout guide is. It's a book of businesses that uh, highlighted in that area. Most of which are, I don't want to say higher end, but a boutique, you know, um, local businesses. It's yeah. not a lot of huge, like major retailers or, you know, major national restaurants. It's, right. it's highlighting local favorites, right. You know, established local favorites, you know, in that particular area. So the book that we're in together is scout guide Williamsburg and Chesapeake Bay. Yep. And with our friend, Sarah Harris. Yeah. She does a know, great job curating that. Book. Who runs that. She's awesome. And gosh, I think, how many, how the one that's about to come out, I don't, I don't know this, every single one, I think I was in every one of hers, but the first one. And yeah, so this, this is, this is her fifth volume, her fifth. Okay. So then this will be our fourth right? then with her. Um, so we love it. It's always such a fun experience. And we actually do another book down on the South side, oh, dude. Um, Virginia beach. We do that one as well. And we're considering putting them in, San Antonio and Austin and right. Charlottesville is where it came out of, which I never yeah, even knew that. Base. Yeah. That's the home base for scout guide, the company. So, you know, it, look it up. You can pop on scout guide. I probably scout guide.com and, you know, put it in locations where you're at and you'll see if you have one or not. And if you've never seen the book, get yourself one of the books because it's amazing. And if you're choosing, you know, who to consider doing business with in your local area, these are going to be some great folks. I mean, they're, they're vetted. There aren't a lot of chumps in these books. Right. Um, it's a, it's not easy necessarily from a financial standpoint to, to be a part of the book. Um, so it's, it's established folks who are in there doing good things and it's yeah, a good community. I, yeah. It's kind of a group of businesses who are willing to make the investment because yeah. they're at that point where they're, they're trying to curate a, a good solid clientele who, yeah. you know, are looking for uh, people who are willing to invest in them. Like they're willing to invest in their business. Yeah. And we've, and I'm sure you guys would agree. Actually, it's funny. I was, you know, looking at y'all's website the other day and going through, because I just wanted to make sure I was up to snuff on, you know, what you guys are doing and what you're about. <laughs> right. And um, we have so many clients that we've ended up doing business with through the scout guide and that relationship. And on your website, it talks about, you know, current clients, you know, marketing, maybe it's websites, whatever it may be. Right. And I'm like, oh, I know them. 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 And I was like, oh man, this is like the digital version of the scout guide, the yeah. client list. And that's kind of what it's about. Absolutely. You know, you're finding like-minded people that um, offer great services, great reputations, care about the clients and the experience and, and they do business together. And then going back to it, that's how we originally met. It is through Sarah. It's through Sarah. You guys have gotten a puppy marker. Yep. And you're like, she's like, Hey, there's this dog guy who's going to be in the book with us. Call him. 
And that's what we did. Yeah, I'll start from there. <laughs> Man, what a what a difference it made in Marker's life. You know, he was he was 18 months or so. Yeah. Yeah. He was when young. We, when you got him. And then he was full he of became it. an office dog, went on vacations with us. Like yeah. it definitely changed his life and ours. Yeah, it was um it was a good time. Well, look, man, uh take a little bit, introduce kind of yourself and and you know what you're about, what you do, and and sure. all that. Well, uh I'm Rudy Heinitz. I'm one of uh five partners in Consociate Media. We uh, just celebrated our 10th year, 10th anniversary. Congrats so, on that. Thanks. Yeah, big milestone for us. Um, we're a full service public relations, marketing, design, comms company. Yeah, we started out, uh, like I said, 10 years ago. My wife is the founding partner. Um, she has a journalism background. Yeah. So started out really, you know, PR heavy. And then it was one of those things, like a lot of small businesses, your clients say, well, hey, can you do this? And right. you go, of course we do that. Yeah. Then absolutely. you figure out how you're going to do that. <laughs> right. And then the next right. client goes, will you do this? Oh, yeah, we can absolutely do that. Yeah. And 10 years later, you know, it went from, staff with a laptop at our dining room table to we're now a team of five partners, 16 total people. That's amazing. Um, yeah. And have just a great client base, uh, you know, primarily based in Virginia, but yeah. have, have done some uh, more national stuff. It's, it's been great. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, and one of the things that has always interested me about your guys' business, um, you guys do a lot with like the local municipalities also, like particularly like over in Gloucester, we do Matthews, you know, the middle peninsula and, and all that. And I think that's great, you know, working with them on the business development piece, the promotion of these great small uh, retail restaurant corridors and how to promote and market. Um, talk a little bit about you guys come off as having a lot of passion for your home, your yes, hometown, we, we your, absolutely do. your region. And I think that carries over in your guys' business as well and the efforts that you put in there. What is that, what does that stem from? Are you guys homegrown over there in in Gloucester? And, uh, or did yeah, that come I about mean, after? Even though Steph uh, is from a military family, she yeah. spent most of her childhood, well, half of her childhood in the area. She, you know, was born in Germany and did like elementary school over there. Yeah. But so she is the least homegrown of kind of the original partners, um, but still has a passion for the area. And then uh, Brian and Mark born and raised Gloucester. I moved to Gloucester when I was five. Yeah. Um, so that's where that comes from. Uh, so it really is a matter of understanding that being part of a community like that is how our business grew. Yeah. And it's funny cause any number of people have told us or told us in the beginning, you'll never be able to grow a company like that out right. of Gloucester. Yeah. You'll never be able to recruit talent. You won't find the right you know, people won't trust that you can do the job because you're from Gloucester. Yeah. And we were always committed to, well, we'll see what happens. Right. And so it was being from a community like that, that allowed the business to grow. Cause it was the people that we knew from community service, uh, right. type endeavors that said, Hey, I need, you know, someone to write a press release for me. Sure. And then that person refers you to someone else and refers you to someone else. Right. And, you know, we got, uh, a really good opportunity uh, when Steph left her corporate job, they became clients. Okay. And then when I was still in, you know, corporate America um, company, I was working for hired her to do some stuff. Yeah. Um, when she was still a single woman shop and they're still clients to this day. That's cool. So it, it really was a matter of, we would have been one of a thousand firms like ours in Richmond or on the South side. Right. And in Gloucester, I mean, to this day, 10 years later, we're one of three. Right. And so we, it, it really is being from a community like that, that supports its own. Yeah. That has allowed us to get to this point. Right. Now your background is corporate. Yep. You know, large corporate environment yes. and structure. Yep. Um, talk about, talk about kind of that process that you guys went to, you know, maybe professionally and as a family. Cause I think a lot of our listeners are, you know, entrepreneurs, you know, they're, they're business owners. They're thinking about starting kind of that, that side hustle. And they're dreaming about like, man, can, is this something that could become the main thing right? and not the side thing? Sure. Right. And so I love when people have gone through the process of, Hey, I had the, the corporate deal, you know, the, the, the good money, the kind of guaranteed income and work. And, and I knew what, life would bring right. to that transition point of, Hey, we're actually going to make this transition. 
and you know we're gonna go all in on on us sure because that's literally what you're going all in on right with that as have three other partners in addition to you and your wife yeah. so that's pretty amazing but talk about kind of that story because i think a lot of people um take so much comfort right in the security of that mega company and what it brings right so can you do you mind talking a little bit about kind of that story and that transition oh sure yeah no problem um well the idea for consociate really started because um you know after we had our son will Steph was looking for some more flexibility at that time. We live in Gloucester. She was driving to Suffolk for work. Yeah. Um, so it was, yeah, it's a hike <laughs> and, you know, was kind of looking for something to, to really kind of mold her time as the way she wanted. Um, so that's where it started. Okay. So started out really part-time while she was working full-time. Then the business grew a little bit. So she cut back to part-time. Yeah. Um, then it grew a little more and she left her corporate job. Right. And then, you know, about 14 months later, roughly, you know, it got to the point where her business grew such that she was going to have to hire somebody to provide some kind of support. Yeah. At the same time, I wasn't super happy where I was, not because it wasn't a great company, just because sure. I couldn't see what the next steps were going to be. And yeah. was maybe looking to make a change and had talked about that enough that Steph provided just enough opening of right. kind of she was tired of hearing me complain about making the next step. And right. She just said, well, fine. Why don't you just quit it? Yeah. And, I was, and that was, I don't know that she really meant it, <laughs> but we're going to take advantage yeah, of it. <laughs> it was enough crack in the door right. that I submitted my resignation the next day. Wow. And, um, at that point it was, you know, consociate was at a level where my salary was more than the company's top line. Uh huh. And I had about six weeks of time accrued. Yep. So we talk about burning the boats. Like we had yeah. six weeks yep. to figure something out. Right. Um, and it, it is not a plan I would ever recommend anyone sure. do. You know, it was, you know, looking back on it, having a, you know, a young family and the security that I did have strategically, it was not the smartest way to sure. go about it. But I, you know, looking back, I'm not sure that I would have changed it because yeah. I can't ever say that the trigger would have been pulled because I, I had a great job. I yeah. was, it was very secure. It wasn't going anywhere. You know, I had, you know, built up a, a good kind of reputation with the company. Sure. I was, yep. you know, there was no reason that I needed to leave it other right. than I kind of a wonder lost for what was next. Yeah, no, I get it. And I want people to I want to make sure people picked up on what you just said that their company at that time, the company, not like what they were looking to pay this new hire to, to bring on to help with, with a need, but the company was generating revenue less than his salary at the time yep. <laughs> at his very secure, comfortable job. Yep. All right. That, and, and he mentioned burning the boats, right? Like you made the trip, you made the journey, you burnt the boats. There is no going back. Right. And that's tremendous. And I, I think when you leave that plan B, like I'm a big fan of no plan B, right? They, like I, they're, they're, agree. I, I don't have a backup plan. Right. I have my plan and my plan can be fluid. Sure. Because I'm going to adjust to what I come about. But there is no plan B. No. And I, I think that when people have like, well, I've got this backup plan just in case. I mean, you got to be wise, right? But the wisdom right. should be built into plan A, right? you know, to, to some extent. But it, I, I feel like when people make moves as aggressive as you guys did, if, you're, <laughs> if you have a very solid, safe plan B there, subconsciously, I think everybody plays to plan B. 100%. And, and it, it holds you back from really making that big risk at what you're going for. Right. And so you're saying, hey, look, We've got six weeks to figure this out. And it's not necessarily in that scenario. Like we have six weeks to replace my salary, but we've got six weeks to close this gap to sure. where we, to where we can buy another six months, right? To where we can flip that into buying another six months, right? You know, and attack it and create what you guys have now created 10 years later. That's yeah. awesome. I'm a, I'm a huge believer in plan B only gets in the way of plan A. Mm-hmm. It, it yeah too too much parachute becomes problematic 
Yeah. You know, I had a t-shirt on as my big tail was on the treadmill this morning and um, it says run the play on it. And, you know, I, it's just a, a reminder and of run the play. We have the plan. We know what it is. We know the steps we have to take to execute. Like if, if things are hitting the fan, like are we running the play appropriately? Right. Right. And, and we were on a show, actually a show that aired today. Jonathan made a reference to players contracts and, you know, sharing the playbook with them and all those things. And just to go with another sports analogy, you know, teams don't have one play, one play. You know, there's right. not, there's not one setup. There's not one strategy, but there is the plan. There is the goal. Sure. And there's, there's a million micro decisions that play into that. Right. And what is the appropriate play at the appropriate time and put all of your energy and focus into that strategic play. Right. And so this t-shirt, I just love it. It says run the play and it's got like a little routes, like of the receivers running and <laughs> right, the, like the running back. Yeah. It looks like the uh, chalkboard, like old school, like coaches, you know, yeah. chalkboard but it's little dollar signs and cents. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like run the play. Right. And um, I, I just, I love that, you know, plan B gets in the way of plan a it does because we want to people instinctually look for safety and they, pull, oh, they, they play it safe and I don't blame them. Not I get all. it. I make those decisions probably daily without even knowing it. Yep. Um, but th that importance of keeping plan B out of the way of plan a is, is a big deal. Yeah. And, and it's important to be nimble and it's important to understand when you, you know, have to take a new path yeah. because you know, wherever you were going, isn't going to work. Right. But any kind of, you know, plan B that is an automatic of I'll just go get a job. Yep. It is going to deter any success. I think you're going to have long-term in your own shop. Agree. Totally agree. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Don't work plan A to death when it's obviously not working. Right. Nimble. Right. Be nimble. Yeah. You got to know when plan A sucks, <laughs> but <laughs> there becomes a new plan. Right. A. You need like plan a sub part one, right. not plan B. I mean, we, you know, you talked about the young family. Like I can relate with that a lot. So 2000, four Logan was born mm -hmm. um and late 2004 right before he's born Devin's probably seven months pregnant I left my job opened my own mortgage shop um took on leases hiring people all this stuff and everyone uh, Devin's family Devin's friends like what the hell is he doing oh yeah I'm pretty sure our what? family thought what? we were out of our minds I mean out of our minds now so four or five years later market crashes tanks we lose everything bankrupt i mean completely just wrecked and destroyed right. and everybody several i'm sure had a <laughs> i told you you know i told sure. you so you know here's the thing even if i was with the job that i had it impacted everybody yeah the market I still, still would have been totally screwed like we <laughs> right. still would have been in a total shit show yeah um we just personally had liability for all of it right <laughs> so you know but hey we rebuilt and, and it's fine. But like when we did that, there wasn't a backup plan. Like we were all in and it worked and it worked well for a long time until the world decided that it wouldn't. Right. And if I wasn't so young and arrogant at that time, I would have paid more attention to the writing on the walls and made different decisions. Back then though, I believe that my plan, my plan A was better than everybody else's plan A. And if I kept working it, I just outwork everybody and we'd be fine. Sure. And I believed that all the way to bankruptcy court. I mean, that was, that right. was the, the deal. I, I wasn't nimble. I wasn't willing to change. Now, fast forward 13 years, eight years into a, another business that we're doing okay with. Man, I'm about as nimble as can be. Not physically. I'm working on getting more <laughs> nimble physically. Right. But man, if something's not working, we're going to change that mug. Oh if, yeah. If, if someone's, if somebody on my team, you came in, you met some people, you know, on the admin team and stuff. If they give pushback challenges, because they're the ones doing the tasks. They're the ones doing the work. Doesn't mean I'm always excited about the pushback and the changes they're proposing sure. or the question. It doesn't mean I always agree, but we've got it. We change stuff a lot and that can be hard for a growing organization because sometimes people will feel like, Hey, it's not stable. There's not stability. There's constant changing. What's going on? But when young businesses are growing, you have to be able to move and transition. Oh yeah. The number of times that we use the term growing pains in our office right. <laughs> on any given day. Yeah. You know, cause it's, it's just the nature of the beast. I mean, 
you know, I guess at the end of 2019, we were a five partner shop. Like that was it. It was just the five of us. We had gone through an intentional um, degrowth period yeah. um, after uh, growing way too fast uh, at, a, at a certain point. We had scaled it all back. It was just the partners and we brought on the fifth partner. Yeah. And then from that point forward, we've, you know, three or four X our revenue. We're now a team of 16 or 17. That's awesome. You know, we run a strong intern program with the local colleges. We have all the services that we provide under our corporate umbrella yeah, that's awesome. versus having outsource. So, I mean, you have to be willing to, to see where things are going right. and how to take advantage of that. And also know when you're on the wrong path. Yeah. And being able to provide those solutions, like you talked about clients are like, Hey, can you do this for us? And you're like, yeah, we can do that. Sure. And now let's figure out how the heck right. to, to do, to build websites. Let's yep. figure out how to do social media marketing and, and advertising. Um, let's figure out, man, a lot of our clients have this need for uh, commercial video work or photography. They're asking us for this, how we should bring this in. Yep. You know, and how do we figure that out? So as you've grown, and like when I look at your partners, it looks like each of you guys bring this separate skill set and yes. specialty yep. and that have allowed you. And I, I presume that those relationships were acquired and grew. They were previous relationships, but they came in house as you guys grew. And that need became apparent where outsourcing it no longer made sense. Right. And that's exactly how our growth has happened. It would, you know, a matter of, you know, we start to get enough requests for a certain service and then we outsource it for a certain amount of time. Right. Then we start to run numbers and we realize, you know, this is consistent enough that it makes more sense to us have more control. And while we're taking a financial risk by bringing it in house, we also reap the financial reward Yeah, because the margins are always better when it's under your own roof. For sure. Um, so that's how everything has grown. And then the partnership group has kind of grown in kind because we all have different skill sets right. and bring something very different to the table. So when we get to a point where we know, okay, we either want to bring a new service online or we have a service that we know we need to take to the next level and right. we don't have that expertise in house. That's when the real growth begins internally. Yeah. That's where we start adding people. That's where we started adding service lines under the consociate tag. Yeah. And the thing I love about what you guys do in that model, when you do add that new service, that's been being requested, you immediately have something that you can go to your existing client base and say, Hey guys, you know, that we're doing this now. Right. Do you, you want us to take a look at, at what you're doing? Cause they already trust you with the PR side. They trust you, or trust you with the content creation, whether written or digital, you know, they, they have trust with you there. Now all of a sudden it's, we have video, we have, photography, we have whatever. They're going to let you come in and, and take a look. And you're also the the concern of acquiring new clients doesn't become as heavy, right? Because you're able to service existing clients and and maintain that relationship and grow it even more with what you have, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it also allows us to even if we're not kind of upselling, for lack of a better mm -hmm. term, to our current clients, having everything in house allows us to be more nimble. Yeah. With the services that we're providing from a content creation standpoint, That's cool. you know, if we have clients that have been with us for three and four years, what we were doing at the beginning may not be the most effective now, right. you know, probably the most obvious is the, the effectiveness of video now on social. Sure. Well, four years ago, we could not have done that efficiently mm -hmm. for people trying to outsource it. Well, now that we have video in house, you know, we can, while we're not making any more money, quote unquote, you know, we are shifting resources away from graphic design or photography, yeah. for example, and then shifting that to video. And it allows us to provide a higher level of service without having to, you know, change the business relationship. Right. We, we get to have, you know, that kind of flexibility on a month to month basis of, all right, well, that didn't work. So we're going to yeah. shift it over to this type of content and let that fly. Yeah, it's. It's interesting because I look at like with us, with on the training side, we have somebody on staff now um, who 
he travels between the locations mm -hmm. and all he does is hang out with the trainers and shoot video, take pictures, create content. And it was stuff that we had in mind over the last several years. Heck, a couple of years ago, Jonathan interned, you know, during the summer and he'd run around with us taking pictures, putting together after videos right. and, and doing things like that. Um, and that was kind of like the start of it. And then we had somebody else who was helping us out with it and and doing it. But consistency in the creation with that first individual and, and another one, um, it, it just wasn't there. Now, though, the guy that we have in place, like the passion, the number one passion is dogs. And they understand dogs and they understand right. the movement of dogs. They know what the dog is going to do next and all these things. And then you factor in this incredible, ridiculous talent with photography and video with a very unique editing style. And all he does is create content for us for social. Right. And it's just built up, built up 80% of which will never be seen. It's just there. Oh, and, yeah. and we take it and we load it in and it right. starts getting put out and pressed, but it's the most incredible stuff. I look at things Jonathan's put together for us. I look for, th look at things he does content wise you know, for the podcast and reels and stills and, and different things. This is stuff I could never do. Yeah, I, me either. I mean, this tool in my hand, this iPhone, whatever, hey, I can take some pretty cool pictures. But the stuff they put together is just wild. And it's become so important from a, a, a business standpoint. We have a staffer who just does that stuff. Right. And we're not freaking Spielberg in it. We're not green screening. I and mean, we can't do that. We're dealing with real lives and real dogs and real moments. <laughs> sure. But we're able to document and tell the stories. And when I, when I hired him for this position, he's like, well, what do you want me to do? I said, I'm hiring you for this position because I've been following you. We, we've known each other through off leash for years. Mm -hmm. um, and he had owned a couple of locations for a couple of years. Uh, they ended up becoming a part of our, our overall team. But I loved his social media because he was always telling a story right. and not with words, but with the pictures and the videos that he would do, he was always telling the story of, and when you see those pictures, you see the relationship between the dog and the handler. You see the process sure. that that dog's going through during its training. And I said, I don't want you to change anything. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I want X amount of stills a week. I want X amount of shorts a week. And I want a longer kind of highlight video a week. Right. I'm sure as hell not going to tell you how to do it though, because that is your strength right? and your skill. If I could do it so damn well, why would I be hiring to do it? And that's what I love about y'all's model. I mean, you guys have five partners. Yep. And I imagine there's a lot of collaboration between you all. Yes, there is. There's, you know, we always say there's always room for more, but we're still in client services and things got to get done. But right. yeah, when, when we do our best work, is when everybody is around the table yeah, because so we all have such different skill sets um, and different viewpoints and how, you know, we look at things, but I'm like, you like, I can't do any of that stuff. I'm the finance and ops guy and, right. you know, get to voice my opinion on content, but what comes out of our shop as far as the, the creators always amazes me. Right. You know, and the, you know, and a, a lot of it, you know, to your point about Jonathan starting as an intern, what some of these you know students are able to do that run through our internship program yeah. is crazy, and you know people can always you know point back to well the technology is so much easier, but it's way it's 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 much more than that. It's, it's way about, more than that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I have the same technology on my phone, and <laughs> right. you know, well, well, you see the cameras we got, and they're, they're nothing compared. to, I'm sure what y'all run around with and stuff, but for us, they're they're a big deal and and nice quality and stuff. And I'm like, hey man, I'm gonna take one of the cameras. Don't freak out, or I'll forget to tell him I'm taking one of the cameras, and he'll come <laughs> in the studio and freak out because the camera's right. gone. And I took it to a volleyball tournament. I'm gonna try to take pictures, or I'm taking it to one of those golf tournaments and trying to take pictures. I get like 10 pictures and I'm like, screw it. This is so stupid. I, I yeah. don't know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah. It amazed when seeing what like professionals do yeah. with the same camera that technically I can use, <laughs> like I know how to turn it on. Right. Yeah. It's like, it's two different machines. Uh -huh. I like the, just the intricacy and how the slightest adjustment here. And the fact that they know those adjustments off the top of their head. Yeah. Like I could probably, get close to the same picture, it would just take 10,000 iterations of the same 
right. grouping of settings to get there. To get it. And the thing that's really funny to me is, too, I think about, like, my kids. Like, this is the cameras, like, they grow up with and can't have access to. I think about when I was their age, right, and I thought a Polaroid was the most like high tech thing. Like I take that picture and it would print it out and you shake it. And I'm like, Oh shit, this is awesome. You don't even got to go get this developed. It developed in my hand. I thought that was the most incredible thing ever. And now on my phone, I think there's 78,000 pictures, 30,000 videos. And now you get Uh, 4k resolution (laughs) and as many prints as you want. Right. And in 4k, I look so, so handsome. My beard looks far less gray. So (laughs) Jonathan, thank you for always editing and, one day you should figure out how to like, because I don't want to ever do just for men. I don't mind the gray. The wifey likes it, so I'm good. But one day you should figure out how to edit and make it jet black. I could do that now. No, oh, don't do that. Don't oh, do that. please do that. <laughs> As a favor to me. <laughs> do no, you, do go it. ahead. You want some more hair too? No, I don't want more hair. I don't want more hair. Just go ahead and and jet black the beard. Take it back three years ago. It was dark three years ago, man. I don't know what happened the last three years, but... Um, it is a last couple of years put a lot of gray on a lot of people. <laughs> it, it thinned out and it put yeah. a lot of gray Talk on my about face. Having to be nimble. Oh my gosh. So how, um, for you guys, like what is the, we bounced around a little bit talking about like the service offerings and stuff. Um, and obviously there's lots of things that you can provide, but if someone is thinking of what, what would have them need to contact associate like what is that what is that trigger where like you're that that niche and that service offering for them um for a lot of clients it's just a very specific project that is the entry point yeah they need x piece designed or need a branding video um and that's kind of you know most people don't have those capabilities in house and have no need to so for a lot of our you know new clients that's how they come on board okay um and then for other clients they're just looking to up their you know, marketing and communications game. Yeah. They want a, a stronger look. They want to rebrand. They want more consistency and getting their messaging across whatever the platform is. Yeah. Um, and so what we bring to the table on that is in order to, pro- you know, to provide the kind of output that we can, a, a private company would have to hire six people. Right. You know, and, and we can package all that in a manner that is more, you know, financially viable for yeah. our clients um, and managing all of their communication needs. Yeah. And, and we have some clients for whom we are their marketing department. Okay. They, here's the keys to the kingdom. You do it. I'll let you know if there's a problem kind of thing. Okay. Um, and we have some where we only handle, you know, component X because they have somebody in house to handle Y and that's been going good. And and, and anything in between everything is, is hyper personalized to what the clients clients need. We don't, We don't sell any packages. Right. So you'll go everywhere from as basic as, hey, I need some graphic design on X, hand over the content, and they run with it, take their ads, you know, promotions, do whatever, marketing, to, hey, I need graphic design work, a marketing plan, implementation of said plan, and management of said plan to where they're doing nothing at all with it. Yes. I mean, we we have clients for whom – we are, we, you know, we call it the Jiminy Cricket plan right. where we're, it's really just, <laughs> a, you know, a monthly kind of consultation. We'll review sure. what they did, provide some suggestions. Yeah. You know, once there's a plan in place, we do little reminders for them to implement it. Hence the Jiminy Cricket plan. Yeah. Um, and then we have clients who literally say, here's our entire marketing budget. Yep. You know, we no longer want to manage it in house. We've grown to a point where we, you know, it's easier for us to just have oversight. Right. So here you go. What, what would you do if you were us yeah. with these resources? And that's media, print, social, everything. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. We can handle everything soup to nuts as far as your that's communications awesome. needs. And you guys do a good amount in medical, right? We do. Okay. Uh, with those, and Virginia is a primary. Yeah. As far, primary. As, people you see, as, far as your servicing goes, but yes. you can service anybody. Oh, yeah. Wherever. Yeah. We can service anybody anywhere. Okay. That's really awesome. What, um, talk a little bit about Marker 9. Oh, Marker 9. Yeah. Marker 9 is a uh, a coastal apparel company, casual apparel, yeah. uh, T-shirts, hoodies, caps, that kind of stuff that I started along with two other partners uh, about five years ago at this point. Always very much a side project. Yeah. So never really got much attention. 
but was fun enough. You know, you're designing and hawking t-shirts, right. going, going to events under a tent, BSing with people. Yeah. So it, it provided enough interest in finances, you know, for us to keep it going. Cool. Plus, there was an emotional pull where every time we said, like, we don't have time for this anymore. Right. It was always, but what could it be? Yeah. So it always, yeah. kind of, it always kind of hung around. Yeah. Um, and we never wanted to take resources away from consociate. Sure. Cause that, I mean, that was what was feeding everybody. Yep. And so uh, last year we actually said, well, we, we either need to make a big change or we need to just get rid of it. Um, Cause we weren't gonna have the time to do it. So we rolled it under consociate. Yeah. And, you made a big change. Yeah. Like it, it was a fully separate, had nothing to do with consociate. It was yeah. me and, um, my brother-in-law at that point as the owners and, you know, it got the attention it could in stop gaps. Right. So we actually, uh, sold it to consociate. It's now under the consociate umbrella so that we can kind of, ooh, you're fine. So that we can put the R- Rudy's and you're just throwing mics all over the right. room. <laughs> I know, and I know how much this equipment costs. So, I got it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we rolled it under consociate that way we could kind of put the full, breadth of our services behind it yeah that's awesome and really see what it can do yeah and you know we figured that was that was really the best way to figure out yeah if there were any legs there yeah and so for the most part previous to the fall you guys were doing uh online and pop-up sales yep you know kind of pop-up shops and then in the fall you opened a physical store we a did. retail location yeah which is I, i've been by i've not been in my wife has been over there a couple times actually um, so my closet has gear in it. Um, well, that's the most important, part. but yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> but she said it was awesome. She said it was great. Yeah. It's, it, it was the perfect opportunity for us to dip our toe in that water. Yeah. We opened, uh, November 19th. Yeah. So if you're going to open a retail space, I highly recommend doing it right before black Friday, <laughs> right. rolling into Christmas. That was a great time to, yeah, that's cool to help push sales. But yeah, cause it's, it's in the same, um, complex as our consociate media offices. Yeah. It's 500 square feet. So I we, freaking love y'all's strip right there of awesome. the businesses because yeah. I love every one of those businesses. I love every one of those owners. Um, it's just, it's the coolest place. Yeah, it's great. I wish there was a cool dog place room for a dog place in there. I'd go drop something there. <laughs> it's so cool. I, I love it. It's just each and, and you walk across the street to barbecue. Yeah. So either. I don't know that. I honestly don't know that I have more of a desired location. I'd like to drop an office than than in that strip yeah. there i mean yeah. it's so it's cool been phenomenal we were the third tenant there um the uh, little england mercantile obviously being the anchor store and yeah. then sarah moved in and uh we were right behind sarah yeah um, and it's just it's been great you know the the owners uh did such a great job revitalizing um they did do a nice those job. storefronts and you know all of the uh business owners that are there are phenomenal it's like it's like a kind of little business family that strip was rough before yeah, they came it had, in it had seen it had been around for a while though yes, I mean, it it just, but great location you know for those local here at hampton roads particularly on the peninsula i mean once you pop over the coleman bridge it's what two and a half miles on the left yeah like, maybe not even that far yeah it is quick and if you ever run over there to check out marker nine um or consociate media you know you should pop in and, and say hello but then you should also pop across the street the scoots barbecue 100 percent, and it's going to change your life yeah gary and karen do a <laughs> phenomenal job with the food over it's there. so far good too good we are over there far too often <laughs> i know that's right far too often so now back to like kind of the the the, the roots of your community and the importance of mm-hmm. your community um marker nine is the what the marker going into yeah marker nine the green channel marker number yeah. nine is the kind of the last one coming out of sarah creek yep. heading into the york river which is where we always take the boat in and out. Right. So when we came up with this idea of wanting to do a coastal apparel line that celebrated our love for the water and living on the coast, we were trying to figure out obviously a name and branding and, you know, just came up with what if we just like, what if we figure out what that marker is and it could be marker whatever. And in that meeting, somebody said, you know, what if it was marker nine, you know, we would just use that. It's got a nice ring to it. And the next time we went out, we were like, Holy hell, it's, it's marker nine. Yeah, it is. the That was the number. I love that. And so we only cool. said that in the meeting because it had the best flow to it. Right. We thought. And then that's what it and actually then that's was. What it happened to be. And then, you know, started talking to my brother-in-law about wh- whether or not he wanted to get involved. And he walks into his garage and 
walks out with one of the markers from that post. No way. That had fallen off 15 years prior. So he had, he had just held on he to had it. one of the marker number nines in his garage. So the universe was just screaming. This is yeah. your, here. literally, here's your sign. Yeah, right. <laughs> if there was ever an actual, we have a sign for you to pay attention to. It was when Mike walked out of his garage holding that three foot green number nine. That's so cool. Which we still, which we have in the shop today. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that. Um, I look, I just love that sense of community. I love that commitment, you know, to the community. Um, and what you guys are trying to do there. Another thing that I followed with you guys over the last couple of years that um, has been super fun to me, because I love it when people do stuff that's not traditional, if you will, or what everybody mm. should do. Like you guys were established, great home, great neighborhood, you know, you're raising your son, but you guys are water people. You love the water. Yes. And an opportunity came about to go to a smaller, older place. Yep. With a somewhat decent view. It's not bad. It's not. It's <laughs> I tell not you, I bad. damn near jump in the car every time you post sitting on the beach with the fire going um, and cross the bridge. I mean, yeah. it's it, incredible. It's amazing. Yeah, we we could not feel more fortunate that we so found cool. that place. And Will loves it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because one thing that we didn't know about the neighborhood when we moved in, because you know, it was the spring of 2018 yeah. where it rained for 140 days straight. Nobody was ever outside. <laughs> right. So we moved in that March. And then once the weather started to break, all the kids started coming out. And there's like eight kids within a quarter of a mile that's awesome. in his age group. Oh, that's perfect. And so you know how kids are. Yep. They find each other automatically. So like the first day of spring, we had – like nine bikes in the yard <laughs> and they've now graduated to four wheelers. They're right. like a little biker gang that rolls through the hood. Um, <laughs> but it's just, yeah, it's, it's such a great small subset of a community. All the people are great. It's, you know, kind of very typically small town yeah. in, you know, some ways in that like our neighbors are three siblings who grew up on that property. Oh, wow. And their mom is in a house on the other side of us. <laughs> and then, so they've watched all of this grow up around them. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, but it, yeah, it's just phenomenal. And the view does not hurt. No, it doesn't. And we had a pretty tight list because we loved our old neighborhood so sure. much, but we knew we wanted to be on the water. And we had a pretty tight list of stuff that we, we needed, yeah. you know, to make a move. That was, you know, all of these boxes had to be checked such that I was like, this is going to be, years right to find all this and then all of a sudden this listing popped up i was like wow steph we may have a problem like <laughs> our our three years may have just become three weeks yeah um and come to find out like based on where obviously with a real estate purchase one of the boxes we have to be able to afford it sure so given where we are and, and the great piece of property i was like something has got to be wrong with this house yeah because we could afford it and it had been on the market for like 11 months and so I talked to the our agent, and turns out the guy had only ever air beat and beat it. And so it was never available to show. Oh, okay. And yeah. the real estate agent finally said to him, if you're serious about selling this thing, you have to stop renting it out. And it popped up in our Zillow query like four days later. And you were on it. And we were on it. We did everything we said we would never do. You know, we bought that one before we sold our last one. So we were carrying. Yeah, a couple for a couple months, but it was just one of those things where, when we saw it, we just we knew that it was right. so we were supposed to be there, and it has proven to be the case. If you're paying attention, people, the Heinitzes believe in no Plan B. Yeah. They are they are Plan A, and they are all in, and they're going to commit to that plan and and get it done, regardless of what the circumstances are and it presents. I mean, they stay focused on on that plan. We try to. Yeah. It, awesome. it seems like the bigger the stakes, the the worse we are about a plan. B. Sure. Sure. <laughs> and but it, maybe that's the way it's supposed to work I, out. You know, I, I tend to agree. I, I think that, I think it requires that. I think it requires that type of fortitude and dedication, you know, when it comes to stuff like that. Right. And if there's pause and hesitation and you don't make that first, take that first step and, or move, <clears throat> nothing comes of it. Right. You know, you're, you're rewarded with the chances, you know, there, there's no great rewards with safe moves. There's safe yeah. rewards. There's consistent rewards. There's 
typical rewards right. with typical moves. Yeah, and it's how we've approached a lot of it. Like, yeah. you know, the the latest partner to join our team, uh, Michael Kimball, who was formerly the vice president of marketing at the Waynesburg Winery. Yeah. We got word, again, through Sarah, who's a conduit of a lot of things <laughs> as far as getting people together, that, you know, Michael was looking to make a move away from the winery and, you know, maybe start his own shop or, yeah. you know, just, you know, try to change things up. And we had known of his work because – you know, we really enjoyed what the the winery was doing from That's a awesome. digital content perspective. Sure. And so, you know, we met with Michael a couple of times, met as a partnership group, um, and then decided, you know, to make him an offer to join the team. At, That's cool. At a, at a partnership level. Because um, we just felt like he was the next right fit. That's awesome. And, it, you know, and it's paid phenomenal dividends for everybody. That's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool, man. I, I love y'all's story. I love what y'all are doing. I want to honor your time and, and whatnot. What's the best way for folks to connect with Consociate or, or Marker 9 to, to learn more about what you're doing? They want to pick up one of these fly hoodies, you know, or, <laughs> or a hat or a T-shirt coming into the spring and summer season. You know, how do, how do they find you guys? How do they connect to learn more? Um, well, easiest way is probably uh, through either the websites, consociatemedia.com okay. or marker9.com or, you know, Hit us up on, on social media. We're very responsive on stuff. Cool. Um, we're just over the bridge with both companies, as you mentioned, and the sure. shops at Tide Mill. So if you want to come check out the store or pop into the office, that's where we're at. Man, that's really awesome. I can't thank you enough for being in here today. Oh, I really appreciate the invite. It's so cool. And Jonathan's going to make sure we tag your socials and websites will be in the show notes awesome. and, and in comments on the, on the posts and stuff. So guys, yeah, I mean, you know, each week we try to bring you some value and, um, Hopefully there are a couple of nuggets you could pick up this week from our good friend, Rudy, uh, who's got his second dog in training right now yes. with off leash. Molly is with Amanda. She is with Amanda. She's, she's, she's doing well. So this little puppy yeah. real quick before we let y'all go. So we're, they told me they got a, a puppy. Devin and I were over in uh middle peninsula for a bit and we were coming back. I said, we should stop by and associate and see if the puppy's there. Cause I know dog friendly office markers in there all the time. Yeah. I had a feeling the baby might be there. Y'all, this little raptor of a dog, she was eating <laughs> me alive. Oh, yeah. She was eating me alive, and she had those little puppy teeth. And puppies bite. She was biting something special. She, yeah. I mean, she was. Like a mouthful of razors. She was on it. But she's gotten big. She's freaking cute as can be. She's getting there. And she's very lucky she's cute, too. Because the way no she doubt. was biting, it's like a damn good thing you're an adorable little girl. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and Marker threw off our puppy game. Right. Because he was the most laid back yeah. easiest puppy on earth. So yep. even though we knew whatever dog we right. get is not going to be a marker puppy. Yeah. Molly has given us <laughs> everything a lab puppy has to offer. That's like, like Devin and I with kids. Yeah. Logan was pretty chill and easy and had us thinking we were like studs as parents, right? right. Like we are the model for all of this. Right. And then my little angel was born Kiki. And we we weren't that hot. We weren't we're not that great. It's right. challenging. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My parents will certainly, uh, and I'll admit to this, that I provided far more challenges than my older sister <laughs> ever did. So, That's funny. But yeah. Molly is definitely in line with that. That's cool. Well, we'll, what we'll do too is um, when she finishes up, we'll drop in the show notes there after videos also um, for, for the, for the dogs. So that's cool. Look, love your family, man. We love y'all. Um, please give them our best. We'll, do. Uh, we'll get over to the shop and, and see y'all and maybe we'll hit up scoot sometime. Cool. All right, guys, we'll All see right. you next appreciate week. It, we appreciate Thanks. it.